Dow Watch episode 25. First of all, I've got to say my apologies. I haven't actually um, uploaded an episode for months now. Um, loads going on, but couldn't uh, couldn't 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 get to recording. In this episode, we've got some real uh, uh, tough Dow discussions to go through. We talk about one of the OGs or the OG in the Dow space, Dash. Talk about that for a very long time. Uh, we then move on to Pivx and Cosmos Atom. There's a very, very controversial proposal, which has probably led to a fork in Atom. So there might be two Atoms soon, but that's a massive proposal that we're going to discuss. And finally, the guest DAO for this episode is SAFE, uh, which is a EVM-based project. But more about that in the show. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, congratulations on finding this video because uh, DAOs are the future and you are early. Uh, not as early as me, obviously, but can't all be rock stars. I'm Cryptosi. Enjoy the show. Like, subscribe, all that other good stuff, and uh, let's get going. Hello and welcome to Dow Watch episode 25. I am your charismatic host, Cryptosi. Today I'm hooded up. I haven't been here for a little while. I've been um, a little bit ill and had a lot going on really at the start of the bull run. But without further to do, let's get cracking. This episode we've got the usual suspects. So let's get started with those. And our, no, actually before we do that, I'm going to talk to you briefly about our guest Dow, which is SAFE. This is, I think, the second time we've looked at SAFE. SAFE is a, I guess a tooling software for you to easily create multi-sig wallets i might be simplifying things too too much there but it's a it's an easy way it's it's a dao style tooling because it allows you to organize in a certain way so we're going to be looking into safe a little bit later i have covered safe before in a video if you want to see that i will put uh, a link to it uh right here above my head yeah, there'll be the video. All right, let's get started. Dash. So um, there's more talk in Dash about the Dash Trust um, and the next steps for it. Now, uh, this is interesting because generally the Dash Trust has been a... It has not really worked out. It has been a bit of a failure. I say that because Dash Trust is supposed to exist to keep Dash Core honest. Um, Dash Core arguably has been failing and Dash Trust arguably haven't done anything about it. And that's literally the only real reason why um, the Dash Trust is supposed to exist. Remember, I'm an outsider to Dash and this is a very complex proposal. It's very interested for people for interesting for people who are interested in DAOs. Dash is one of the oldest DAOs. This is the type of proposal that all DAOs are going to be going through at one one point or another. So it's it's kind of important whether or not you're overly interested in DAOs that you try to get your head around what is going on here, at least to the level that I've got my head around it. Um because I think all DAOs eventually reach this point where they start to have these sorts of problems especially if they try to solve their problems with legacy solutions which is what a trust is okay so we need a legal structure which is set up in real life i believe it was set up in somewhere like new zealand uh yeah okay here we go so what is the dash irre irrevocable trust Dash Core Group is a C-Corp that is incorporated in the state of Delaware, which is in the United States, and is headquartered in Arizona, which is also in the United States. I'm not in the United States, so I've not really got much clue about these places. As with all corporations, DCG needs to issue shares. 
certificates of, of ownership to one or more people or organizations. Given that the DCG was created to support a decentralized network and does not operate to generate a profit, and even if it did have a profit, there is no personal organization that deserves to profit from owning that company. To solve the above dilemma, a New Zealand trust was created to own the shares of DCG, which means that this New Zealand trust is supposed to control DCG. And it was managed by a board of Dash trust protectors uh, who were elected by the Dash Masterdome network. So the DAO elects these people to run the trust. The trust is a bunch of guys or girls who can then go to the DCG and say, well, we've got the shares and do as we say. Simple. The purpose of the DTB is to manage the dealings of the trust and to oversee the DCG board of directors. Okay, so you're a shareholder. Uh, there's a board of directors for this DCG company that you're a shareholder in. If they're not doing what you want, then you remove these board directors, you know, people get sacked, et cetera, et cetera. So if they say they're going to deliver some software and they don't deliver it, you know, heads roll. Simple, right? Uh, the trust dean states that if DCG were ever to get dissolved, all remaining assets would get donated to the Red Cross. Um, I guess they're assuming there would be no remaining assets because... Or that they're not going to dissolve. I don't know. I don't get this. I don't get this line. That goes over my head. Okay, no problem. What do we uh, consider when changing the private structure? Problem one, it's proven very difficult to find volunteers to serve in the DTP. Uh, I think that's because they have to be docs, they have to be public, and nobody really wants that drama. And the last attempt to recruit volunteers was not successful. I believe I I covered uh, that proposal um, and I, I believe I went over exactly what was wrong. I will put a link to that in the description. And in fact, if you want to know more about that, I will link it in the video above. So you can go to that video and watch it. Anyway, that was not successful. Only one person volunteered. Thousands of people in the Dash community and only one person volunteered. 99% of people said, no, no, thank you. And that one person had insufficient experience. Um, I think that's rude. <laughs> I think that's rude. How dare you? Anyway, um, that person wasn't me, by the way, but if it was, how dare you? Uh, we currently have no Dash Trust Protector, so Ryan Foster has been managing the dealings of the trust. Um, uh, who said he had sufficient experience? I don't know. There have been discussions in the past about potentially paying DTPs a salary so there is more incentive to serve the time and efforts involved but no such proposal has been raised and in the current market conditions it seems unlikely it would pass. So in the current market conditions it seems unlikely that the Dash uh, Masternode owners would pay someone a salary to make sure that the core group did what they said they were going to do. There were two trustees that oversaw the trust, the original trustee, which uh, is domiciled in New Zealand. This was a few of the crypto-friendly regions at the time. And a co-trustee domiciled in Switzerland. From the knowledge acquired to date, most, if not all, communications occurred between the DTPs and the co-trustee in Switzerland. There was a single point of contact at the Switzerland firm, and that particular individual has been very unreliable and often non-communicative, not responding for days or weeks at a time. But um, I guess they were in Switzerland and so somebody felt that they were reliable and that they had, uh, I guess, uh, sufficient experience. Uh, but they're face fit. They're in Switzerland. Most of our corporate accounts and yada, yada, yada. Okay. Uh, so there's all these problems with the, with the trust that we don't really need to go into because it's quite obvious that the trust was made to keep DCG honest i don't want to say honest but um i don't mean honest in that sort of way it's a it's an english colloquialism to say that the core group which is the dcg those are the devs all right the main devs that the core group are uh supposed to be controlled by somebody else who's not the core group who are acting on behalf of the masternode owners but the master owners kind of don't really want that. They kind of want the core group to 
to run themselves because they're developers. Like, who else can tell developers what to do apart from developers? I, it, it, it is kind of logical because how do people who are non-developers really understand the complexities of development? Okay, you know, um, and it's, it is somewhat logical. Not efficient, but it is logical. And they're saying after months of further investigation, discovered that a Switzerland contact has been acting in bad faith. Okay, so his face fit turned out to be a, a, a fraudster. Uh, problem three, without a valid trust, DCG will not be able to verify our corporate structure to any further partner and our stand standing as a legitimate organization is greatly jeopardized. This is extremely important. It's the, it's the, the Dow dilemma. You want to be decentralized, but if you don't have a point of contact, which is legally recognized by a court of law, how do all the other companies who are legally recognized by a court of law communicate with you? Oh, we want to do some business with these guys. It has to be legal. Who are they? They're a bunch of master node owners. No, you need to have a, a legalized structure. Even if that legal structure has trustees who are purely anonymous, it makes sense to the legal structure. Um, somewhat illogical. Who cares, right? It's it's the old structure. So we work with it. What are our options? And this is the, the, the important part. They can create a new trust with a single trustee. This will take time to evaluate new trustees. No one's going to put their name forward. You've already tried that. And if someone does put their name forward, they would be so batshit crazy that you would more than likely assume that they don't have the relevant experience more than likely their face won't fit they have to be from switzerland or at least look like they're from switzerland uh would likely cost anywhere between 4k to 12k to establish the trust and about 3k to 15k per year for trustee services uh this would also require dcg to pause pursuit of any new partnerships with larger institutions and would increase the risk of legal ramifications for not having a valid corporation until the new trust has been established however given even given these downsides this would uh, this would be a simple trust with no dtp component so that it is less complicated and less costly than the original structure this option does not rule out the ability to reinstitute dc dtps at a later date a later date uh when the market improves if the community wants to do so if there is sufficient commitment from people who want to serve as trust protectors number two create a new trust with a single trustee that includes the DTP oversight as the original. Uh, create a new trust to do the same thing as the old thing. The cost would be certainly be more than option one, probably double, and it doesn't, doesn't solve the issues around recruiting competent trust protectors. Um, there is no issue around recruiting competent trust protectors. Um, that is an issue around incentivizing competent trust protectors recruiting them is kind of easy you haven't had any applicants that you even believe are you haven't even had applicants you had an applicant and i'm pretty certain that person is crazy whoever they are pretty certain yeah if it's more than likely you and you're watching you're crazy this would also probably take longer to establish given the complexity and uniqueness of the structure finding a willing trustee may prove difficult uh a lowercase may, which should be uppercase, should be a lowercase will. DCG board members, are uh, option three, DCG board members hold shares of DCG instead of a trust. This would require legal costs when the board changes to transfer the shares to and from. So DCG board could just continue to do as they like, but it's out in the open and they have targets on their own head. I don't know if this option is a little bit of a of an FU to the DCG. Uh, this would likely to be the least costly, most expedient option to make DCG a corporation in good standing. However, the DCG board does not feel comfortable having ownership in DCG, even in a temporary time frame, due to the potential legal and tax consequences. Of course, they don't. Um, I, I guess this was... I guess this is one of those options, you know, like sometimes when your child's being rude and you say to them, okay, well, drive yourself to school. And the child is like, oh, yeah, all right, I will crash. I will die. This is that sort of thing. All right, well, do it yourself then, DCG, if you, if you really like that. 
DCG will not do it themselves. They're not going to do it themselves. That's crazy. They just put in a target on their own heads. Uh, while other options have been discussed amongst the community, the DCG board and previously seated DTPs, uh, they were either too disruptive to the operations of DCG. Okay, so <laughs> we're here to oversee the DCG, but we can't disrupt them. Interesting. Required development uh, resources or money that all were too complicated, requiring excessive administration. Okay. Um, it's an interesting proposal in that it doesn't really have a yes or no. There are three options. Um, with the dash down, you can't vote one of the three options. There has been a lot of discussion around this topic, uh, none of which was really linked here, which is probably the worst part about this proposal. That there is, it, it's, it's, I, I love the way it's very detailed. There was a little bit of storytelling in here, which somewhat irrelevant, but it kind of, it lets us know that the things that we've done in the past and the way that we tried to put authority into the hands of these um, somewhat uh, trustworthy looking people turned out to be not the trustworthy people. Um, but it's a really well put together proposal. Unfortunately, the DAO is not ready for a proposal like this. So it's somewhat pointless. No matter what happens here, it's somewhat pointless. It, it's just another way of, of talking, of of spreading the the uh, somewhat slanted uh, uh, opinions of of this particular uh, individual, Brian Foster, who I believe was mentioned there. Didn't we just speak about him? Um, okay, so. So it's a well put together proposal. Um, it goes, it covers these things. Now, this has been discussed, and the person who I think has got their finger the most on the pulse, unsurprisingly, is a guy called Hilawi. Now, Hilawi has commented here um, a few times. I think this is probably uh, the most useful comment that he's added uh, if i've uploaded it or not i'm not signed in oh, i just want to hang around for now um and it's from a former dtp a former dcg board member uh regarding the proposal and the options given and this proposal uh member i will link to the screenshot this proposal member basically says he doesn't have time to go through all the discussion and um, that might seem like he doesn't really care or it might seem a bit arrogant, but often when these things, discussion goes in circles and he's probably been around in these circles a few times. But as he mentioned to Foster in some one-on-one -on -one discussions, where we had his opinion, it's his opinion that the, the dash, that the trust structure should go away entirely for the time being. The shares of the corporation would revert back to DCG uh, and the directors and officers would be fully in charge. And that's what they definitely don't want. Uh, I don't understand the we're not comfortable argument. Uh, <laughs> you, you understand it. Uh, that's, um, again, that's, I guess that's corporate speak for, for you should shut up, really. Uh, if you're a director or officer of a US corporation, that is the job. Facts. There's a uh, DNO insurance in place to limit liability. I don't think spending that kind of money on a new trust makes sense until the community can figure out actually if it will be made able to make use of the trust structure with or without DTPs really. Otherwise, it's just unnecessary complication and expense. Uh, we never really made use of the previous trust structure and as this discussion has revealed, it was rife with all kinds of problems. Save the money, simplify it, and then hopefully in the future the community can return to an innovative corporate structure leveraging the DAO. I think the structure is there. I think the structure just needs teeth. Um, Halawi then goes on to link to his own video. Um, a little bit of background about Halawi. He's a former DTP, Dash Trust Protector. Uh, he would ask master node owners to vote no on this proposal. Uh, he's got a Google slide presentation from Utah Dash Retreat. 
Um, he's also presented this uh, as a video. And here is a link to the video. I will put a link to the actual video uh, above. You can click it. And I will put a link in the um, description below also. Okay, so in this video, he he goes through it, and it's it's more of a, a a testimony than an opinion. So you're listening to me. I've just got opinions. I've not been on the front lines. I've I've not actually worked there. He worked there, and what he essentially says is that the 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 trust the trust in the end was quite toothless. Um, they couldn't really make the changes that they wanted to make there was there was pushback from bcg people would say that they were going to quit they would do this they would do that um they made suggestions and the interesting thing about this whole situation is that it's happening in dash but it happened in pivx where i was very active and it will happen in all DAOs because there's going to be this core element of a few guys who everybody is frightened to death to replace so he's uh suggested that maybe they should have development where uh you're developing based on different departments so instead of having a core group you might have a mobile department you might have a platform department you might have a, a light wallet department you might have a um, business development department you would have these separate departments and then based on whether or not these separate departments are doing well the master node owners can fund them um, to me, that makes perfect sense. Now, obviously, to the core group, it's not going to make perfect sense because they they become a core group and they start to defend each other, as a good group would do. And they're not often they're not going to want to leave anybody behind. Um, so that gets that gets pushed back against. Now, um, it, they. Sorry, my phone just went off. It does leave the the, the dash trust does um, become toothless and somewhat pointless. What ends up happening, and what has happened both in Pivx and Dash, is that you have these third parties come abroad. Aboard uh, in Pivx, they're called Pivx Lab. In Dash, they're called Dash Incubator. And these third parties, they end up doing stuff correctly um, because they have got the threat of competition constantly looming over their head because they've got a core group that are incumbent that they, they, I wouldn't say that they want to replace, but that they have to do better that. And they, they generally do better than them um, in both senses. Now in Pivex's term, in Perix's reality, the core group ended up leaving because of whatever reasons i don't i don't know personal reasons maybe whatever but luckily there was this pivx labs and they continued to develop and they then started to take on core groups work but they're set up in the same way that they always were set up and it turns out now that they are possibly more effective than the core group at pivx work i'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say that the good chance that the same thing may happen in Dash. I don't know why it's happening in Dash after it's happening in it's happened in Pivx, as Dash is supposed to be ahead on the curve. But they're they're really they've not developed that part, or they've not they've not undone that part yet. I guess because they've got this platform, which is which core group have always managed to hold to keep people trusting them um all right i'm going to wrap up because we're, we're spending far too long on this one particular proposal so to wrap up let's say uh let's the, let's say this this proposal is very well written um the the issue we've got here is that what we really need is what what we really need is we need a, a trust structure that has got the teeth to fire people in core. It's got the teeth to say, this particular group, we want X, Y, or Z out of you. If you don't do it, then you're fired. Then worst case scenario with the dash core group, if they really don't like it, they can go cry back to the masternode owners 
to remove X, Y, or Z from the trust group. Um, and then the trust group have to do it under penalty of being sued by the um, the uh, the anonymous um, beneficiaries of this trust being the masternode owners. But they need to have that. They need to have those teeth. The the core group need to be held accountable on a uh, project by project basis, so that if people aren't pulling their weight, they can get held accountable. We had that in PIVX. There was a proposal put forward by a guy called Liquid. Other developers who are under the same um, uh, the same amount of spotlight, the same amount of um, uh, what's the word? Well, they're, they're being watched as closely as, as Liquid, the developer, was. They came on and they said, this guy's not pulling his way. He needs to do X, Y, and Z. Subsequently, he did do X, Y, and Z, and he was held accountable. In Dash Core Group, there is no such thing. Um, and people are becoming increasingly frustrated with it. So um, I'm with Halawi, unsurprisingly. Um, uh, I, I feel like, I don't know if you need to vote no. Um, I'm, so I guess I'm not with Hanawi because I'm not voting no. I'm simply going to ignore this. Simply going to ignore it because there isn't a response that speaks to me. And on top of that, there is not a voted mechanism that will allow me to uh, adequately vote what I want to happen. I want there to be a trust and I want the trust to fire someone. I want it to go in there, pick somebody, I don't know, the biggest, toughest guy in the room, fire it, sack it. And then let the rest of them know this is what happens if you don't do what you say you're going to do. You get sacked. That's what happens in the real world. Failing that, I want Dash Core Group to take on the shares and I want the guys there to have that level of um, target on their own on their own head because they need to put on their big boy pants. And if they're not going to be actually controlled by a trust, then they should be controlled by themselves and have that target that comes with it um at the moment they've got their cake and they're eating it so that's that let's move on because that took far too long now we're gonna have to rush through the other ones but I, I like that one that was a good one and these these other ones are quite short pivx finance market making this is by my pal jeffrey i always give jeffrey a hard time jeffrey is incredibly thick-skinned he can take it and there's a proposal here to do uh binance market making um, I'm not a, a massive fan of market making, but I've had to come back with my tail between my legs and accept that it's a necessary evil in the world. Um, I don't believe any evil is necessary apart from market making. Um, nice proposal, well put out. Jeffrey generally puts his proposals out well because he knows I'm going to uh, generally shine them under a microscope and try to pick out faults with them. The only thought I can find with this one is that there is no discussion here. I've come through and I've said this almost uh, three weeks ago. There's a lack of any discussion here. It's worrying. Uh, people starting to think that their opinion is not important. Um, it's already been liked by the two kingmakers. So we may as well accept what's going on and move on. Um, Jeffrey has replied to me saying, look, what I'm doing is working. I can't really argue against that. But somebody should be. Um, but they're not. And that's a little bit worrying. Uh, in the last 30 days, an average of 25 participants per week come in, but uh, miners have provided 2 million of field order volume on Binance, 4.5% of the exchange. Also, spreads are trending uh, very tight. Spreads, sorry. Yeah, spreads are trending very tight. Um, like, basically what he's doing is he's wiping it in my face, rubbing it in my face. Look, crypto seat. I know what I'm doing. You shut your mouth. Um, got to take it. For this proposal, I've again, I'm not going to vote. And the reason why I'm not going to vote is because it has already been liked by the two kingmakers. Uh, there's a big problem with the way um, uh, the voting mechanism works on this DAO. The longer we stay in it and the longer it doesn't change, the more we realize how big this problem is. I discussed it with Joel on his podcast uh, a few weeks ago. Um, the links are all over my socials. So follow me, Instagram at Cryptosi. Um, 
or on Twitter at crypto underscore SI. Um, we need to have different ways of voting. People who have got um, a higher aggregate fee, people who are spending pivot should be able to vote more. People who have have moved more pivot through their wallet need to be able to vote. Um, people who, there needs to be different criteria to vote in a, other than the guys who are holding the most pivot because they will always be the same guys and once they say yes, it means yes. There's no, there's no, not really any reason to anybody else to speak or vote. I'm not one of those two guys, and I don't like it. it makes me feel small. So it's upsetting. It's not fun. So for this one, uh, I'm going to abstain uh, because I don't think it makes a difference, and that's the comment that I made, and that's really my main um, observation on this proposal. Because at the end of the day, Jeffrey's doing these things, and they are working. But there is very little uh, oversight now. Not oversight. He's providing his own oversight. Um, I've, it's the same word I was looking for before. If you know what the word is, put it in there. Put it in the comments. Let's move on. Now, this one is absolutely massive. I don't think I can get into it because I need to open my Kepler wallet. Uh, let me open my Kepler wallet quickly. You won't see this, but <laughs> okay. So here's a proposal. Uh, this proposal ranged on and on and on and on and on, and eventually the yeses had it. Uh, it was very, very close. It was possibly the most hotly contested um atom proposal for a while if not ever um but definitely for a long while the the uh this proposal has some real uh dow related issues but it also is a very interesting proposal very quickly this proposal aims to change the inflation on um atom on cosmos Cosmos is the main chain in the Atom ecosystem or Atom, the Atom token, uh, Cosmos, the main chain in the ecosystem. Staking it, you generally get rewarded. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's maybe, I might say here actually, 19%. Um, and you'll get airdrops of other tokens and things like that. And there's some talk about them Atom provided security for other chains. All of that is super technical and you may not be that interested in it. Um, if you are, one of the good people to follow is uh, Stake Cito. He's very good. And uh, Don Kryptonian. Those are the two guys that I listen to in this ecosystem. Every ecosystem has got two or three people you should listen to, by the way. But I'll cover that in a whole different video. Okay, so uh, there is a dynamic inflation model. Uh, how the inflation model works is the more people that are staking, uh, the lower the staking APR goes. Uh, the more, the less people that are staking, the higher the staking APR goes. And they aim to have it so that you've got like two thirds of the people staking. Um, uh, what they want to do is they want to drop that because they're staking, they're feeling like the staking is basically to, to provide security to the network. And they're feeling like they're spending too much money on this security. They want to cut that down a little bit so that the inflation is lower, which may mean that the coin price goes up and that the people who are not staking are not punished for not staking as much. Because if this supply is, is increasing and you're simply holding the tokens, the price isn't going up. And yet the people who um, are staking, they are getting paid more for staking than you are, especially if they've got more than you have, then they're earning more tokens, you're earning less, and your value is getting inflated away. Kind of similar to how you have it if you've got pounds or dollars in the bank. Uh, you know how that goes. Other people are printing it, and you're just holding it. You're a month. So they want to drop the inflation model they want to make it fair up to the people and uh, they want to see the price go up. Um, they have to discuss the network security and they do so. Uh, they're saying that most proofs of state networks issue with under 7% of supply annually uh, while maintaining over 60% of supply staked. Um, well, they say that that is 
I'll explain that terribly. What they're saying basically is that they're overpaying for security. I agree with them. Uh, high insurance is not a prerequisite. Um, so what they said is they don't need to issue highly to pay for security. Um, they can issue low on a higher token price and pay for security. Although that was not their initial recommendation, they also referenced the lowering of both the max and min bounds of inflation as a near-term option while the community reached consensus on the more drastic change in Atom's supply schedule in the future. So they're saying that things could get even worse than this halving. Worse? Better. I would say better than this halving that they're proposing. Uh, and the security shouldn't be impacted on that much. So you get a 50% gain in uh, the, the, the quality of the tokenomics and you have a 5% loss in the amount, in the level of security. I know, probably even less than that. Problem is validator costs. At $9 per atom, 10% uh, max inflation, 5% commission, so it's 7% bonded, and assuming $600 a month to run a validator uh, on the chain. Uh, the validators from 1 to 107, so if they've got that much atom, because the more atom you have, the higher in the list you are. If you're that high up, if you're in the top 100, uh, you're profitable or you're breaking even if you're running two of the consumer chains. Um, I don't even think there are more than two consumer chains at the moment. That's technical. You don't really need to know that. Uh, validators 1, 108 to 114 would break even or run at a small loss. Uh, they can't soft opt out with two consumer chains currently active. Uh, validators 115 to 117 can soft opt out and are profitable running just the hub. So if they're not running the, the other consumer chains, they're still profitable whilst these consumer chains are tiny. Uh, validators 176 to 180 are unprofitable today. They're already unprofitable uh, and they would be slightly more unprofitable if this went through. So they're, they're, those validators all the way down there are making less than $600 per month. When combined with the soft opt-out mechanism and the recent increase in minimum commission at current atom prices, uh, all 180 validators are break even or profitable at 10% max inflation of of commissions alone. This will be the first of three proposals where other subsequent proposals will be used to reduce the minimum inflation and increase the inflation change parameter that affects the spread at which inflations change on a block by block basis. So this is the first of three. Highly, um, uh, highly uh, contested. Um, okay, so let's look at what the validators say. But before we do this, we have to bear in mind the validators will be directly impacted. This directly comes out of their bottom line, directly. Um, and we need to ask them. We believe voting no on Proposition 89 is the way to go. While acknowledging the concern about 20% in inflation rate, the proposed halving in one parameter change appears too aggressive. It might be wiser to lower the maximum by a smaller amount, observe the effects, and reassess in a few months before making further adjustments. Gradually increase, it, gradually decreasing inflation block by block would be considered more appealing as, uh, more appealing as noted by Blockworks Research. Oh, uh, fair. They've got additionally consumer chains don't cover up node costs and validators rely on higher rewards in Atom to offset these expenses. It would be beneficial to see rewards decrease gradually over time to allow these chains to be come profitable um this is a very important part because this whole idea of consumer chains if they're not profitable then it's not going to work i don't know what happens to these consumer chains if these guys don't include them then they the whole model kind of falls apart um it's a very difficult model to begin with the whole consumer chain model uh let's go back if we can and let's look at someone who said yes um stake cito uh, they've said yes to set the maximum inflation rate 10% for the Atom token. We have detailed a number of reasons why we have voted yes in our Twitter post. Uh, they've not linked to it. However, in short, we believe that in this change to Atom inflation, we will not affect chain security. And minimally, uh, that's that's not really true. They won't affect chain security on the Atom chain, but on the consumer chains, it definitely does. And minimally impact bonded ratio in the long term. We also believe that smaller Validators will recover from the short-term financial hit with reduced commission income, whilst the reduction to inflation along with changes in the next two of their proposals will increase investor confidence in Atom 
and certainly around supply. Can I like that? Um, I want to like that. Let me approve that and like it. Yes, I want to like that. Uh, but I think they're right in everything apart from the point that I've highlighted there. Uh, they turn this down, price goes up. Um, I like it overall. Let's uh, wrap this one up. I like it overall. It's a great proposal. It really, um, they covered all the points. Um, they linked to some uh, research done by what is quite a credible um, independent uh, organization. So I would I would accept what they what they're saying. Um, I think it's tough for the little guys. I really do, and I kind of worry about the consumer chain issue. But I think, I think I feel like that needs to be fixed elsewhere. Um, I don't, I, you know, like when the argument against cars is because the people who own stables needed to stay in work. I think we need to sort out the stables elsewhere. Um, Making these changes is better for us, so we need the cars. We we need to drop this this uh, this inflation is too high. Uh, the the chain is is mature enough now. These high inflations are generally around immature chains. Um, not to say that Atom is a mature chain yet. Still think it's quite an immature chain, but I feel that it's maturing. Lowering your inflation is a sign of your maturity. You don't need to perhaps uh, attract as much as you need to now maintain. Um, Cosmos is one of the networks which is doing that very well across multiple um, different factors, uh, metrics. They're, they're maintaining developers. They're keeping developers. Their, their, their networks are maturing um, in the ways that they do their airdrops is maturing. They are fostering a lot more engagement in those, in those ways. Um, their usage is maturing, their fee revenue is maturing, their tokenomics is also maturing. Things are going very well. So um, I do feel for those guys, I, I think that the problem with a three-point plan like this and having to put them through one at a time um, is, is that it's we need to be, be able to take the other two parts into account uh, I think that's probably the worst part about this proposal is that these two subsequent proposals have not been linked. Uh, I think they should be linked. So you can see all of them. They might be in the, the forum post uh, where they've put it anyway. Anyway, great proposal, well put forward, uh, well discussed by the people in Cosmos. State CEO complained that there was too much drama. Uh, so I've, I feel like he needs to put on his big boy pants um, there's going to be cognitive diversity. It's a good thing. What we need to do is remove the drama. I don't like the way he wanted to remove the drama, which was by saying, oh, you should just say what it is you feel, whether it's yes or no. No, you need to have actual things in place. What he should have done is what the Dash guys do and have people on his show on both sides of the argument. So he's got a a show which is well watched, uh, well covered because he's he's good content creator he should have had shapeshift DAO on there or somebody from shapeshift DAO to uh say their points of view and explain why and really go into it he should have somebody from uh lavender five nodes to explain their point of view he should have some people from validators who are in this bottom part and he should have had somebody from two of the consumer chains whose security is under threat from this proposal um he didn't do any of that Instead, he said, you know, make up your own minds, do your own research, et cetera, et cetera. But he didn't aid anybody in that research. So, yeah, State CEO, um, or Crypto Cito, I believe your name is, do better next time. Um, as one of your fans, that's what I want from you, do better. Um, for me, um, I voted yes. Uh, this was one of the ones that I, I did actually vote in, and I voted yes uh, with all of my accounts. Because this one was close, <laughs> and what I vote, I don't know if what I voted made a difference, but you know, I felt like it made a difference. Um, that's where this DAO is possibly more mature than Pivx, although it's much younger. The distribution of the voting is uh, very wide. So, 
uh, that's that. Let's get on to the last one, safe doubt. And this one is, it should be a long one, but I, I've really, I've kind of run out of time. It's supposed to be a half hour show and 43 minutes in and uh, congratulations for getting this far. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you've gotten this far in, obviously you're enjoying it. You're having as much fun as I am. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe um, and share. DAOs are, they are going to be the way people do business in the future. They, they simply are, okay? Bitcoin is inevitable. Uh, smart contracts were inevitable. DAOs are also inevitable. You can say you don't like the drama, you don't like this, you don't like that. There is no other way for people to work together in a decentralized fashion other than for them to work together in a decentralized fashion. And it does better. Um, so congratulations on getting this far in a show like this, this early that gets so few views because, you know, it's not for the masses, it's for the few, the very smart few, just like you, the, the, the talented, I would say 10th, but it's not even going to be a 10th, the talented 1%, super early, super clever, give yourself a pat on the back, you are a rock star. And that's the reason why you do it so well in life and you're so pretty or handsome now this is the reason because you watched this so far outcomes based on allocation framework uh obra uh this is by safe dow uh, safe is this project which allows you to have a multi-sig um hold your assets in a multi-sig and then uh with votes by your members do certain things with the multi-sig uh, swap your coins or um uh, send coins to somebody or buy a certain coin or uh, lock up or unlock a certain coin. It does loads of different stuff. All right. So it's a great piece of tool in this. Very, very good. Um, there's a proposal here by if you own safe tokens, I guess you could vote in these proposals. And this one uh, passed a few weeks ago. But when I was initially done my research, although I'm recording like a month later, this was actively being discussed. Yeah, it only just come on. Um, great proposal. Well put forward. Um, a very, very long proposal, unfortunately. And only put forward in a text format. A proposal this long must have a video. Right? So what I might start to do is when there is a proposal this long, what I may start to do is just make a video for it. Um, to make a video proposal like this might take 10 to 15 minutes to cover all of the points in the proposal. Um, but it gives people a different way of understanding the proposal without having to sit down and read through it. Maybe they're driving, they can listen like you're listening to me now, or you're watching me now, watch you on your exercise bike or doing something that superheroes do. I don't know what it is you guys do whilst you're, whilst you're watching me. Um, but it's only text, so you've got to read through it all. Well, luckily for you, you don't have to because I've read through it already. And I'm going to tell you what it is. What it is is what it is is somewhat pointless, but it's added bureaucracy that's supposed to make everything more efficient. However, it's um, it's also kind of toothless because people don't have to follow this metric. And it's only really going to work whilst the DAO is tiny. Uh, I'll cover why in a little while. So what this aims to do is to have a, a system with a hierarchy um, so that certain different things are higher up in the hierarchy or when you're putting in your proposal, people know what your proposal is for and they and they they act accordingly. Um, to make sure that everybody's on the same page, there are different separate sections that your proposal should fall under. Okay? So uh, in general, overall, they want the, the DAO to head in a certain direction. And to, to make that happen, we need to be good at these certain things. It's a bit similar to what I was saying about the dash down, breaking things down. Um, but I I just criticized this one, but I didn't know if the that one. It's, it's a little bit different. Um, and then there's going to be a wildcard strategy for all of the other things. Um, the good thing about this wildcard strategy is that it kind of means that even if you don't really agree with or you don't really feel that you fit into one of these other things, you can jump into the wildcard strategy. So it doesn't limit you to having to follow the strategy that has been um, outlined by the the, the incumbents. Um, 
let me think. Uh, I'm not really going to cover this one because of the time, because of time constraints, right? So the 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 overall, let's oh, well, I'll give you a high level. It's you want to give uh, clear, defined um, categories for each proposal. You put your proposal in, you choose your category, people know what your proposal's for, and the the correct people can pay attention to it, the correct people can give you guidance, and it it's it's good. A problem being is that they, they don't have their own um tooling for proposals, which could enforce these things that they're requesting. Uh so Uh, the pros and cons of this proposal are it, the pros are it makes the governance more concise and uh, better enabled. Um, but also, there was plenty of discussion around this, including um, they had their own governance calls purely on this topic. So I don't know if these guys watch my show, but they they really they done this one properly. They had a lot of pre proposal discussion. Um, and they really set this out in a way that everybody was kind of on board with. Um, and they've even finished with a template, which I love. Um, which pre approved strategy is this initiative driver forward? What metrics? Uh, who is accountable? Uh, they definitely watch my show 100%. Uh, time map for road, uh, time map, timeline or roadmap, uh, for the milestones. Um, and what do you need? Uh, what what upfront funding? And what happens if you do well? What happens if you don't? Uh, da 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 da. da. Uh, then the 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 negative points are that it makes the governance a little bit more complicated. That so makes it a little bit more difficult for somebody who's just coming in to get involved. So a little bit more lay, le learning to be done. Um, and they haven't really taken that into account. Which happens when you get bogged down into your own rabbit hole. You kind of, you, you bog on the head and you don't leave breadcrumbs behind. We need more breadcrumbs. So we need some more supporting documentation. That should be a part of it. We're going to produce this documentation to help people to understand what's happening and onboard new, new, new users onto this layer of complexity. I'm going to have to wrap because we've gone way over time. Um, the Dash uh, proposal was really the one that that uh, made us struggle. So I have to apologize to the safe people that I, I haven't given your proposal as much love and respect that it deserves. Uh, it's a great proposal. 99.98% of the safe holders voted in favor of it, unsurprisingly. Um, it's scarily high. Um, that is scarily high. I feel like the people who weren't up on board would have voiced their disapproval long before this point. So I feel like this is more a case of everybody got heard and everything got um, ironed out with proper pre-proposal discussion. That was the reason why I included this proposal because of the pre-proposal discussion that happened, the quality of it all, and the uh, the the subsequent landslide victory. So, to wrap up and to sum up this episode, uh, don't expect for Dash, don't expect legacy solutions to your cutting edge problems. Um, you're going to struggle with a trust unless the trust is ruthless. Um, for PIVX, it really is about time you overhauled your uh, proposal, not your proposal, your, your consensus finding system. There's not enough uh, diversity of vote. Too many votes in too few hands. For Cosmos, keep up the good work. Um, oh, on the back of this, which I didn't mention, there there may be a fork of Atom. 
there may be a fork of this on the back of this, um, which means that people who own Atom may own Atom, and I think they're calling it Atom 1, because the main guy behind Atom didn't like this. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't like it. He wanted the inflation to stay. He, I guess he's very, maybe he's very on board with the uh, consumer chain and the security, um, and he really, really didn't want it. Um, so he's like, I'm, I'm leaving. He hates it that much. Uh, so he's looking to start a fork. A pack of people will go with him. Um, but I, I love this. I feel like there was a, only a few, uh, the ball was dropped mostly, but my guy, State CEO, he let me down on this one. Um, he should have followed Dash Incubator's lead. But the chances are he doesn't watch any of the progress of these. Uh, I've taken to now calling them Dino coins, the Dash, the Pivex, these coins that have been around since the Dark Ages. Um, a lot of these new guys, these 2017 guys, they're not looking at those old things. They're looking at new things. And they're all going through the problems and they're not really approaching them correctly. So um, so that was the only... That was the only downside in this thing i love this proposal and i love what cosmos are doing and finally safe dow um yeah the moral of the story here is have good pre-proposal and that's it from me um almost an hour long episode i hope you like the the new setup the new lighting we're going to work with it bit by bit i like this shadowy setup i've got going on here let me know in the in the comment section how you've liked looking at my beautiful face for the last hour and um, what you think of of the, the light and how I can improve it, if you know, because I don't know. I'm learning as I go. And um, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, comment below anything that you think I've I've not. If you feel like given Dash Core Group too much of a difficult time or, you know, maybe I've given Helawi too much praise and doesn't deserve it. I'll give it Dash Incubator too much praise, which uh, Ryan said, he 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 didn't like that much or maybe he didn't like I just said that he noticed that I gave them too much praise and that he couldn't have me on until I criticised them um, who do you think I should have on as a guest uh, we have Dow Watch Fireside started uh, where he recently released the episode with Hans Koning um, let me know who I should have on as a guest I want to get someone on from Dash I want to get someone on from Pivx but I also want to get some people on from uh, some of the tooling um, some of the tooling solutions like uh, Safe that Safe Dow, like Juicebox, like Aragon, um, like Dow Dow. All of these people, I want to get some of these people on. So, thanks for watching. Congratulations on making it right the way to the end. You are amazing. Uh, don't forget the book is out in stores. Link in the description. Well, it's out on Amazon. Uh, and next year there will be a new one. And yeah, thank you. And yeah, just remember, you you are here super early. And that's why there aren't that many views on this video. Because we are the, we are the creme de la creme. Cryptosi, signing out. Peace.